Kia ora Year 13 and Year 12. This is the first of a bunch of videos I'm going to make on last year's calculus papers. I'm going to split each question into two parts to keep the video of manageable length. So the ABC question will be achieved and merit stuff, and the DE question will be merit and excellence. That means that I'm going to go quite slowly through the achieved material in the achieved videos. I'll go a little bit faster in the DE videos. As usual, grab your pen and paper and work through it before I try it, because you won't learn how to do these problems by just watching a video. And if you've got any questions or any feedback, please leave me a comment or send me an email on my school email. Okay, so here's part um, 1a of this question. And the first thing I'm going to do here is rewrite that as y equals x to the power of 1 half plus tan of 2x. Now, looking at what we've got here, we've got a chain rule to do on the tan of 2x. I'm going to do it using the idea of the inner and the outer function. I'm not going to do a u equals blah 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 thing, but some of you might want to do it that way. But here we get dy by dx is equal to 1 half x to the negative 1 half plus now the derivative of tan is 6 squared, so it's going to be 6 squared of 2x, but I have to multiply by 2 because it is the derivative of the inside function. Alright, now I don't know what that weird thing there is, but let's just clean that up. There we go. Right, now the next question is the same kind of thing, um, just more straightforward differentiation. Okay, so in this question, we're going to have to find the gradient at the point where x equals 0. So there are a couple of steps here. First we differentiate, and then we substitute in x equals 0. Differentiating is going to involve the quotient rule. Okay, so dy by dx will equal, right, oh, I don't know what's going on with the stylus. Very strange. Let's fix that. That's going to drive me mad. There we are. So the numerator is where I finish up, but I start with the denominator. So I've got x plus 2 squared. Um, pop that up the top. Don't differentiate it. So there's x plus 2 times the derivative of e to the 2x. So that's 2e to the 2x. Take away the derivative of x plus 2, which is just 1, times e to the 2x. Now I could go through and clean that up, but I don't need to. All I need to do now is to substitute in x equals 0. dy by dx is equal to this. Right, so we've got 0 plus 2 squared, 0 plus 2 up here, times 2 e to the 0, minus e to the power of 0. Now I've substituted that all really slowly, because when you're going really fast, the chances that you muck it up are much higher. So it is worth slowing down a bit. Here, I've got 4 in the denominator, and up here I've got 2 times 2 times 1, so 4 take away 1. So my answer to that question is 3 quarters. So let's just read the question back and check that that's what they wanted. Yep, it is. It's find the gradient of the tangent at the point where x is 0. On to the last question. Okay, this question is a little bit more involved. Um, we're given a curve, a parabola, here. And we're told that the normal to the parabola at the point 1, 4 is going to intersect the parabola again at the point P. And they've very nicely drawn you a picture of that. What we have to do is to find the coordinate, the x coordinate only, of point P. So let's think about the steps. Well, we need to find the equation of the normal to the curve. So that's going to be step one. And that's quite a big step. So get the normal equation, and then step two is to solve, solve this equation 
simultaneously with the parabola. So I'm going to go through both those steps on the next slide. Make sure that you've got a picture in your head or preferably in your book of what we're trying to do because it's going to make the question make more sense. In particular, we can look at that point P and we can see that the answer is going to be somewhere in between 4 and 8. Okay, so we want to make sure that that's what we end up with. All right, so step one, finding the normal equation. How do we do that? Well, y is equal to 0 0.5 times x minus 3 squared plus 2. So we differentiate to get the equation of the gradient of the tangent first. Right? So it's going to be 0 0.5 times 2 times x minus 3, which is just x minus 3. And then we say, well, we want to know what that gradient is at x equals 1. So dy by dx at x equals 1 will be 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So the normal gradient is perpendicular. Perpendicular gradients multiply to negative 1. So it's going to be negative 1 divided by negative 2, which is 1 half. Now we're going to use the equation of a straight line to figure out our normal equation. So y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. My point is 1, 4, and m is my normal gradient. So y minus 4 is equal to 1 half x minus 1. y is equal to a half x minus a half plus 4, which is 1 half x plus 7 over 2, or 3.5. So that's the equation of the straight line on the graph. Now we're going to find the intersection of that with the parabola. Okay, I've written up the two equations that we've got. This one is the straight line, that's the normal equation, and this one is the parabola. Now we know that they meet in two places. One of those places is where x equals 1. How can I find the other one? Well, I know that y must be the same if they're meeting, right? So we can equate the right hand side of the two equations. So we've got a half x plus 7 over 2 is equal to a half times x minus 3 squared plus 2. Now the easiest way to clean that up is to times everything through by 2. That's going to get me x plus 7 is equal to x minus 3 squared plus 4. Be really careful with that step. Okay, now let's expand everything out. We've got x plus 7 is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 4. We've got a quadratic, so to solve it we set it equal to 0 and we get x squared minus 7x plus 13 minus 7 plus 6. 0 is equal to x minus 6 and x minus 1. Now we should be really happy with that because we can see that x equals 1 is one of my factors and x equals 6 is the other one. So to answer the question the x coordinate of point P is 6. So let's just write that in. The x coordinate of P is x equals 6. Okay, and that's a merit question. Thanks for watching. I'll be back later on with the other videos.